pretty excited about my guest today, Dustin Matthews. He's a longtime friend, yeah. mentor. He's just written a book with Dan Kennedy, which is pretty awesome. If you guys know who Dan Kennedy is, he's pretty much a legend in the copywriting yeah. and marketing world. What we're going to be talking about today is newsletters and how you can leverage newsletters to grow your market and get more clients in a specific farm yeah. or area that you're working. Before we jump into that, we are uh, going to be enjoying a couple adult beverages today. Uh -huh. I'm going to be trying the Fall Brewing Company Plenty for All Pilsner. That's a local beer um, out of North Park here in San Diego, so big shout out to them. And then Dustin is Ooh. gonna be trying the Uncaged. Gotta, gotta go Uncaged. Pino. <laughs> so there you go, we can get started right. and uh, kick this thing off. Let's do it. Super pumped to be on the show. Good, very excited to have you. The cool thing about a newsletter is that it's it's something different, right? Yeah. Like no one's really doing it anymore and it kind of seems obvious and maybe a little dated, but I think the fact that nobody does it is kind of the magic yeah. and and why it works. Yeah. So, why don't why don't we first talk about like why a newsletter? Well, I think it's funny cuz like on the table we've got old school newsletter next to, you know, like iPhone and mobile. Yeah. And so I know you guys are getting inundated with, you know, mobile and technology and all that. And absolutely, you know, the question is not like, should or, should I do or, you know, it should be and, like, what can I do? For old school, I'm thinking newsletter. And the reason why is that that's that physical touch. Mm -hmm. So like if your marketplace is, you know, skews a little bit older, right? Or maybe they are young, but they're just inundated with social media, right? You gotta show up differently, right? That's the name of the game is how do you get someone's attention? So I'm a big fan of the newsletter because it's high touch. Once a month, mail it out to your prospects. Paper goes places like- You can pass it to a friend. You can pass it to a friend, right? It lays on a desk sometimes. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the old school because no one's doing it, right? So if like everyone's doing social, if everyone's online, do that and you should think about showing up in other places. To your point, right? The social stuff is super important and it's a huge high leverage activity. But when you're sending out something like this, it's more of a personal touch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the tips we're going to share make it really easy to do. Um, it's kind of a streamlined process. There's certain things that you want to have in there that um, will kind of add a lot of value. And let's just touch on the junk mail versus a newsletter. Yeah, absolutely. So, right? so how do you differentiate the two? Well, junk mail often comes like if you are over the trash can, right? Like it neatly folds together and it's right there and it goes easy into the trash. And so to stick out, obviously, because that's the name of the game. Like you can have an awesome newsletter with great content and everything, but if people don't open it, that's you're in trouble. So what do you do to get it opened? And so number one is send it in a big obnoxious envelope. And so it can be big or like you guys do, you send it in a big black envelope, right? right? Yeah. yeah, to get out and cut the clutter. Yeah, so that's, I think, um, a good distinction, right? With junk mail, it's, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna blend in, you don't wanna send just another piece of junk to someone. So this is something that we really put a lot of love into, and also to your point, you know, send it out in something that's a little bit different. Like we've sent, we've bought, um, sparkly gold envelopes. Mm -hmm. um, this this newsletter here is actually called In the Black and we send it out in an all black eight by 10 envelope. And we actually put a stamp on the front that says yes. open and read. Yes. Um, so we have, we've gotten really good feedback on just it getting through to people and them actually opening and reading it with which ultimately is the goal. Yeah, um, I think a big thing on that is, you know, a lot of people want to like cut corners, right? So if they are going to do direct mail, I get it. Like it's an expense, right? right? So we could do social and that's free, but you know, who knows if they're seeing it. And so what I would say is don't cut the expense uh, where it comes to the stamp, the postage stamp. And so some people, you know, you're mailing a bunch of them, you can do the little indicia, which is that little thing that's printed there. But put that stamp on there, make it crooked, because again, it's all about just catching somebody and them saying, is this junk or not junk? Is yeah. this valuable or not valuable? And so that stamp, old school, putting it on there, a little crooked if you can get your mailer to do it, mission critical for getting yeah. it opened. So part one is yeah. getting through people's junk mail filter, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the ways you do that, Big envelope, um, sparkly envelope, hyper-colored envelope, mm -hmm. um, real stamp. We also do handwritten labels. Yep. Um, that's something that you don't have to do yourself. You can outsource it. There's services like TaskRabbit where yeah. someone will come over, pick up your list, and handwrite 
you know, three, four, five hundred envelopes um, for you to send out. And I think that's the way you get through the junk mail filter. It just right? it just has to look personal, you know. I know it's not the card from grandma, but that's what I like to think about. Like, is this something that would pass off as like something from somebody I know, someone that I love, right? And so if you can engineer that effect, then that's that's mission critical. Why has your newsletter been so successful? Mm -hmm. And um, then let's kind of walk through it and, yeah, and let's, kind of let's dive right in. Let's use this. This is such a good example here. Perfect. So I love it right here. So it's called In the Black. So having a name, right? Having a name, whether it ties into your own personal brand or you make it quirky like this in the black, right? Because this, this particular newsletter is about making money and it comes in a black envelope. So there's a theme to it. And so at the end of the day, you're just trying to get mind share of like your person, your prospect, you know, can you just take one more extra second where they remember you? And so I love that you've named it, right? Okay. So, so big give thing it a there, name. name or a theme, maybe, you know, you're the realtor that does this, you know, you're the high end, so maybe it needs to look high end. Maybe you love baseball, and so maybe it's baseball related, right? There's no, like, wrong thing. It's just about being consistent, which I don't know if I gave away the secret there, but uh, it's about just really being consistent so you can have brand repetition so people know and remember you. Yeah. yeah. Second thing I like here, I don't know if you can see it on camera, is the price. So this was one of your favorites, right? Yeah. Every time I got one of Dustin's newsletters in the mail, it always had a price at the top. And I was like, why is this guy sending me mail with like a one page, a one page two page yep. newsletter with a price of $37 on it? Yeah. And when he explained it, it actually made a lot of sense. And so we now do it as well. And tell us, tell us what you told me those few years ago about why you put the price on there. Well, I'll tell them in just a second. I got to share the story. So this is hilarious. So I had a newsletter. It was called Dirty Talk. And the reason why I named it this, I was selling into the real estate space, uh, real estate coaches and trainers, that, that space, not actual houses for this newsletter. And so I called it Dirty Talk because I was appealing to alpha males. And so I needed something edgy that would get their attention. And I always envision this, Oliver. I always envision like the gatekeeper or the spouse or just somebody that gets the mail, like looking at like you, like if this yeah. came to you, Dirty Talk, and like kind of giving you like, what did you subscribe to? Like, what is this thing? And so like that was the effect, right? I just trying to get, you know, that edge factor to get, you know, people's attention. And so um, I put a price on there, whatever it was in the year. And uh, the little secret tip there is every year I increased it $10. So it started off as 29 and then, you know, this thing ran for five years. So eventually, you know, it got up to the final price. And so I remember I got a phone call one day and this guy's like, who the heck are you? Why are you billing my credit card? You know, once a month. And I said, whoa, 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 you know, this newsletter is free. And then his like demeanor completely changed over the phone. And he was like, oh, well then keep it coming, <laughs> right? And so that's a lesson right there because right. this guy thought he was getting charged for something. And so he thought that, you know, he was, you know, there was a value to it. And so he was being charged for that value. And so the lesson is, is like, if you just send a newsletter in the mail here, you know, people, make their own judgment. Is this valuable? Is it not? However, subconsciously, if they see a price on it, it gets that extra split second of attention. And that's what I'm trying to get. It's just that extra second to get my foot in the door. So then people consume what I have to give them. So you're basically attaching a value to it to yeah. kind of lowers people's resistance, mm -hmm. peak interest. Yeah. Because people are going to be like, whoa, what is this? $37. I, yeah. need, to, I need to read. I need to, I need I need to, to investigate further. this further. I need to investigate yeah. this yeah. further. Exactly. Yep. All right, cool. If you're talking about a neighborhood, you could do things like upcoming events in that area. Yeah. Um, you could talk about um, new homes, developments, uh, just any of those kinds of things, right? Yeah, what de else? deliver value, you know, and, and that may mean, you know, talking about the neighborhood. It could be just talking about what's going on in the world, you know. It's a classic copywriting thing to be, you know, entering the conversation in people's minds. So, you know, if it's election season, great. If it's something that happened in the, in the media, talking about that. If it's summer, right, we're going into summer and that's on everyone's mind. You just want to tap into that because that's what people are kind of thinking about, you know. And so it just it's easier to have a conversation there. And when you do the content, we live in such a visual society. So, you know, on this newsletter, we got pictures all throughout. And so people are drawn to pictures, right? Especially of people because they want to see it. Is that my picture? Do I know that person there? And so I love delivering the goods like in terms of value, putting pictures in there to really, you know, bring it, bring it forward to them. Yeah, I love that. Um, so again, you know, the content piece, this is kind of like the main piece of your article. Um, what we do a lot of times is repurpose blog articles that we've written. Smart. Yeah. Um, there's also just 
finding other people's good content and sharing it in a way that is digestible. Um, so if like, for example, our big newspaper here, the Union Tribune, yep. if they did a piece on the city that you're working or the neighborhood that you're working, that could be something that you could include excerpts from, yep. you could kind of repurpose it and recreate it and turn it into your main content piece for your newsletter. All right, so a ninja strategy is to feature somebody. And you, you don't just have to feature just one person, you can feature multiple folks. So like, I like how you've done it here. So featuring one of your clients or vendors or you know, businesses in the area. And the reason why you do that is because when people start to get this, they're gonna flip it over, they're gonna open it up because they wanna see, did I make this month's edition? And so it's like, you know, if you see a list of names, I think back to like, you know, high school, you know, when you're auditioning for a play or a right. sports team, right? They post the list and everyone gets there because they wanna see if they made the list. And so it's that same phenomena in the newsletter. They open it up and I remember having stories of people saying, oh man, am I featured this month? And I said, like, I can't tell you, you gotta, yeah. you gotta open it up, right? And so it's good because you wanna have that behavior. You want people to consume your information. I'll add to that is just the importance of the recognition, right? Mm -hmm. So the people that you feature, like for us, we feature an agent of the month because we're a real estate brokerage and we want to give recognition to someone that did something cool yeah. that month, right? But it could be it could be client stories, it could be um, different vendors in your in the neighborhood, businesses in the neighborhood, just different things that would tie the community together, right? And yeah. the market that they're working. Absolutely. You know, the other thing that folks can think about putting in there are testimonials. So if you have like an amazing, you know, case study, if you have something that, you know, people are saying awesome things about you, then absolutely that should be incorporated in. Because, you know, I can sit here and tell you how awesome, you know, Oliver is and Big Block, you know. However, if I have someone else or a third party, someone that you know or a member that's in your tribe uh, or your community saying awesome things, then it just makes it a whole lot easier and more yeah. receptive to that. Another easy way to do it is if you're collecting Yelp reviews, mm. just doing like a screenshot of your Yelp review and just yep. dropping it right in there because people will see that and automatically associate Yelp with credibility and um, I think that's just an easy way to kind of tie it all together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about referrals. That's big in your guys' world, yep, right? Definitely. So referrals. So what you want to be talking about is referrals. So people that have made referrals, you want to give them shout outs because one, it makes them feel good, right? It's another mention for them, mm -hmm. but also too, it shows the rest of the world or community where you're working. It shows them that referral activity is applauded and is a good thing. And so, you know, because so, sometimes people feel a little weird, like their names on the line or their reputations on the line. And so like, if they see that that, wow, three people made referrals this month, then that shows good behavior, that shows it's safe to refer here, and yep. so it shows that, and so that's how you generate and stimulate more referrals. Yeah, I, I love that idea. That's something that we've incorporated as well. We do um, all the agents that join our brokerage. Mm -hmm. We have a section where we just give them a shout out. Yep. Hey, look at all the agents that have joined this month. And that way when they get it, they're like, oh, cool, you know, I'm in it. They see their name in it, and it also, um, to all the prospects that we send to, it shows that, oh wow, so-and-so moved over there and this person moved over there and oh wow, look, all these people have moved over there and now all of a sudden, um, it just piques their curiosity as yeah. to what's going on over there and, and hey, maybe this is something that I wanna be a part of. Yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing that's mo most important, like a lot of people do you know, they get this idea, they're gonna do a newsletter and they deliver the value, but they drop the ball when it comes to call to action. So I always say, you gotta be promoting yourself. Now you don't have to be obnoxious like, you know, the car salesperson that people think of, but you wanna make mention. So if you've got a free report, or if you need to remind people like to go get a, you know, analysis on, you know, their right. house, what is, what's there, you gotta remind people. You can't just expect them to know, hey, I'm a realtor and this is what I do. You just have to have subtle calls to action in there. And so make sure throughout the news newsletter that you're putting different ways that you deliver value. Yeah, I love that. And, and some of the different ways that we've incorporated that on, on our newsletter is um, we basically inc in, incorporate the entire bottom quarter to a, basically an advertisement about yeah. Big Block. Um, I would suggest doing the same thing that just advertises your services, you know, get a free home report, get a value estimate, yep. any of those types of things that you offer. And then also ways to get in contact with you, right? And not just um, phone and, and email and website, but we put all of our social media links on there because yep. we want to, back to the concept of FaceTime and being everywhere, yeah. we want to be able to engage with us on those other platforms and just continue to close the loop on um, 
people becoming part of your tribe. Yeah. Now, Oliver, they always ask me this. Can I just email it? Oh. And the answer is and yes, you can. But how many emails do you get? Like, seriously, yeah. like 100 emails a day, you know, 200 emails, maybe even more, right? And so, like, do you want to compete with that? And so that's why it's important, you know, take the content that you are producing, if you are, on the blog and put it into something physical. Just, odds are people are going to miss it, a big part of your community. They're going to miss it because they're just inundated online. And so mm -hmm. take that same information that you're creating, that content, put it in print form and deliver it to them so they can consume that way. Yeah. Um, but the big thing, if you are going to commit, you can't commit for a month. You have to let this thing roll for at least three to six months and give it that test and then evaluate at that point. So don't it, like don't do this if you're only going to do it for one month. Like if you know that's you, don't do it. Save your money. And the reason why is it's a it's a brand play. It, Nike doesn't just run one ad on TV. McDonald's doesn't just run one, multiple. Like radio, right? It's the same thing. It's multiple touches. And so it is a high touch. It's an investment in your client. It's an investment in building the relationship. But man, you go six months, a year, many years, and it can really make a name for you in your marketplace. Generate leads and get more referrals. Love that. Um, and just to add to that, let's let's talk about that for a second. So what, what sort of a cost should they be expecting and how many slash how often do you think they should be sending? Yeah, I think recommend? I would say just to tackle the easiest one first, I would say once a month, get this out in the mail. And I want to go back to when I first started my newsletter. So uh, my girlfriend, fiance at the time helped me. And so I remember uh, being in an apartment, we were in a condo and uh, we were in a clubhouse and it had like this copier machine. I swear it was like a 1990 Xerox machine with like 5% toner. So like this thing was like the worst possible thing. And so I was doing it on a budget, so I get it. And so I'd print. I'd make one copy, I'd print it at Kinko's, make it real nice, and then I'd go to this like 1990s like Xerox machine, right? I'd put it on there and we would make copies. And like the quality was horrible, like it like was faded if you've ever made a copy of a copy of a copy. That's what it looked like, but it was important because I got started and I made a commitment to keep doing it. And so, you know, if you're gonna outsource it or do it yourself, I mean, generally you wanna be around a dollar per piece and that's to print it, that's to get the envelope, that's to get the postage out. And so that's where you wanna be. Obviously, if you run a lot of quantity or if you use an outsourced service, you can, you know, go down in cost or you can go up in cost. And so the important part is like listen if you're thinking about hey I don't know if I want to fully commit to this give it a shot you know come up with 50 names that's what I did when I first got started 50 names and it's not the quantity it's just the consistency of just keep doing it mm -hmm. and so for me back to this newsletter dirty talk within the third month someone gave me a call because a speaker had canceled and they say hey listen I need you to come out and do one of these interviews or do this speaking gig and so I was able to do it and I'm not saying it's gonna happen that quickly for right. you and your world but it was the fact that I just stayed in touch with my marketplace mm -hmm. and stuff started to happen and you're doing it in a way that's a little bit different right you're not just yeah. sending out the same stuff that every realtor sends out to their farm yeah you're building something that's custom that's to you and ultimately like this is kind of a love project you mm -hmm. know what I mean like it's not like we personally put a lot of love into creating these and I know you do as yeah, well yeah. and and I think that's what people take notice of and that's what makes them want to open the next issue when they get yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? Like I remember um, one thing you used to do is you put everyone's name on the yeah. on the envelope. Yeah. Right? And so we're, every month it was like, oh, did we make the envelope? Like are we on the envelope? <laughs> like where where is it? We got to be on the envelope. Yeah. That and was so that was a lot of fun. Originally, it started off on the back page, but then I kept adding names to, to the list, and then I had to go to the envelope, and then I just couldn't put everyone's name yeah. on it. But yeah, it made so, people feel So awesome. that's things you could do with like your sphere of influence. You could mm -hmm. do with um, uh, prominent people in your neighborhood, in your area, right? Yeah. People that give referrals. Hey, once you've given one referral, you go on the, on the list, and then all of a sudden that list starts to grow and grow, and then people like find themselves wanting to be on the list, yep. right? Even though it's just a newsletter that you're sending out every month. Yeah, absolutely. I got a ninja strategy just popped into my head. And the ninja strategy was sponsorship. So 
along the way when I was doing my newsletter, oh, yeah, I was like, how in the heck can I make this for free? So two ways I did it. Number one was sponsorship. So I found a business that wanted to ride along with me. So we put either an insert into the newsletter or we put an ad like you did on the back there. And then the second one is affiliate. And so what I would do when I didn't have a sponsorship and I said, hey, maybe I can get some of this cost back, even though I would have paid for it time and time again because I believed in the long term. What I said was I, I put in a flyer in there and it had a special link on it or I'd set up a special arrangement so that anyone that bought or went to the website of this uh, person I was promoting, I would get paid on it after the fact. And so I figured out ways to try to monetize this yeah. thing in more ways than just building my own brand. Yeah. So based on what you just said, number one secret, hey, just get out there and actually do it. Number two, do it with consistency yep. because over time, um, I promise you the ROI is there. I can't show you the data, um, but I can tell you that the reactions of, from people that you're gonna get, like real human beings interacting with you, <laughs> is gonna be very impressive and well worth the money that you're gonna spend, especially when you get two sponsors to cover the entire cost of the mailing. Do you have any final thoughts before we um, yeah. bid farewell? I got something. So, you know, whatever, whatever your goal is, you know, it can be to do a newsletter, um, or it can be to get more listings, or let's, let's, go, let's go way out, you know, left field. Let's say lose weight. So, like, let's say that's your goal, right, for this year. Whatever your goal is, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take one small action a day. And a small action is, like, you know, read a newsletter or, you know, research or call somebody that's the expert in whatever it is that you want to conquer in this world. And so just take one small action a day because over the course of a year, that's 365 actions. And so you'll be amazed at where you end up. And the secret is this. Oftentimes it doesn't take you an entire year because you're building momentum by just stacking all the actions on top. So whatever your goal is, go take one small action a day and you'll get there a whole lot quicker. I love that. That's a great way to wrap things up. I think this is a very smart man and those were very <laughs> wise words. Um, I would also encourage you to pick up his book, The No BS Guide to Powerful Presentations. Where can they get this if they're interested? Simple, nobspresentations.com. You can get it on Amazon, but go there first because it's got all the resources on how to give better presentations and be an influencer. Perfect. Well, really appreciate you coming out. Cheers. Cheers. It's look been at you. Absolute pleasure, and uh, we'll look forward to doing this again. Now you're in the know.